How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you all about how you can make a moving platform that you can add to your Roblox hobbies. Today's video is going to be using a little bit of advanced scripting, so if you haven't already, please check out the beginner's tutorials I have on my channel to get a basic understanding of what we're going to be doing today. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future tutorials that I upload to the channel. Please, I want to eat tomorrow. So to start, you're going to place two platforms, one that you would like to spawn on and one that you'd like your part to move to. Then you're going to place a new part, the part that we're going to be using today to move, and place it where you'd like it to start at. This starting position will be where it returns to and moves from every single time that we run the script. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our workspace. And then we're going to go to the part that we've added to move. And then we're going to add a script to it. But please follow along with what I'm going to be doing today. We're going to be using the tween service, so if you haven't already, please check out a tutorial on another channel to understand what the part is going to be doing when it moves positions. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and created all the variables that we're going to be using that check certain values. Our move speed is going to check how many seconds it takes for the tween to complete. Our move distance is going to be how many studs the part moves. The wait time is going to be how long it takes for the part to begin tweening again. So it's going to move to a position, wait one second, and then move back. And then is tween playing? It's just going to check to see if the tween is currently playing. And I'm going to use this to see if the sound is going to play on the part. Now let's go ahead and get into the tween information. So what I've done here is I've laid out the tween info that we're going to be using for the part. Since the part is going to be using the same info for moving forward and moving backwards, I'm going to go ahead and create a local variable outside of the function I'm going to create later, and then reference this tween info twice. Then what I've done here is I've gone ahead and created a function to create our tween. This is going to make it a little bit more organized within our code, so that way we can just tell it what part we want it on, and then the goal position, since our tween info is going to remain constant throughout the video. Now I'm going to go ahead and start getting into the sound functions, so that way our sounds can play whenever the part is moving. So now I've gone ahead and created the two functions that we're going to use to control if the sound starts playing and if the sound stops playing. This is going to ensure if the move sound exists and it's going to check the status if the move sound is playing or not. Then it's going to determine if the move sound should play or should not play, and if the move sound should stop or should not stop. Now we're going to get into the actual function that controls whether the part moves or not. So now that the function is complete, I've gone ahead and set the isTween playing variable equal to true whenever our function is called, because our tween is going to immediately begin playing after this is set to true. What our forward goal variable here is going to do is it's going to find the position of our move part and then add our move distance, which is equal to 120, to the x value. So that way our tween knows that it's going to increase the x value by 120 and then leave the y and z values alone. Then we're going to create our tween with our uh, function that we have up here. And it's going to go ahead, create the tween, and then play the sound after it's created the tween, and then it's going to play the tween itself. So this is going to cause the part to move forwards 120 studs for 8 seconds, as we specified before. And it's going to wait for it to complete, and then it's going to stop the sound. Then we're going to wait by our wait time, which is 1 second. This is because the part is going to wait for 1 second after it's completed the tween, so it's going to sit still for a second, let players hop onto it, and then it's going to return back to its initial position. 
that is what our backward goal is done here. It's going to take the position of the move part currently, and then it's going to reduce the X value by 120. So then the tween is going to move our part 120 studs backwards because we are subtracting now instead of adding. Then we're going to create our tween for the backwards movement, play the sound again, and then we're going to play the backwards tween. The function is going to wait for our tween to complete, and then it's going to stop the sound once again. It's going to wait again one second, and then it's going to say the is tween playing is equal to false, and then it's going to repeat the function, so that way it starts the process all over again. This is what's going to make our part infinitely return and go as many times as it wants until we've stopped the game. So now that we've done this, we're going to go ahead and call our function, and then we're going to test out the game. So as you can see here, I've gone ahead and changed the move distance to 200 and the move speed to 14. This is so that way our part can correctly reach the second platform we made within our game. You can change this and customize it to anything you'd like if your obby's different. So you can change the move speed, the move distance, and the wait time. The wait time, again, is going to change how long it waits before it begins moving again. The move distance is how far it moves, and then the move speed is how fast it moves. Just remember that if you increase the move distance, be sure to increase the move speed with it so that way the players can keep up with the platform as it's moving and so that way they can walk onto it and reach their second destination. But with that, let's go ahead and start up the game. So as you can see here, our platform is going to go ahead and move until it reaches the second part that we have over here. It's going to stop shortly behind it and then it's going to begin returning to us. Now we're going to wait for it to come back. And once it's come back to us, we can hop onto it and then follow it along as it takes us to the second platform. As you can see, it's going to slowly carry us there. And then it's going to stop shortly behind it and let us hop off. That's how you make a moving part in Roblox. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future tutorials. But with that, I hope you have a great day or night, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.